I just completed a custom tiny house and here's how it went. I was contacted by some great people in Montana about building them a house and they really liked the Monarch tiny house that I built, so that was our starting point. I wasn't comfortable doing the same butterfly roof design that I did on that one because of the snow loads they'd faced, so we opted for a shed roof instead. They really liked the black metal and stained cedar siding, so we used the same materials on this one. In the interior, they had a few requests. They wanted a downstairs bedroom, lots of cabinet space, a bathtub, and an incinerator toilet. They also owned a bike retreat, so they wanted lots of bike features throughout the house. The trailers were back ordered for several weeks, so I got started by just framing as much as I was able to in my yard. I first framed and sheeted the entire roof section and then framed the walls on top of that. I used a zip sheeting product with an inch of rigid foam insulation on the back side of it for an extra R6 uh, blanket around the entire structure. After the trailer was ready, I picked it up and was able to frame the subfloor, adding as much insulation as I was able to get here as well, and then was ready to place all the panels. Luckily, my brother has a boom truck and was willing to help me out for the day. My dad and niece also came by to help, so it was super nice to have all of the extra hands. I had built all of the wall panels based on Iron Eagle, the trailer manufacturers specs online, just trusting that they'd be accurate and they were spot on. So that was super satisfying to not have to rework anything, just be able to place the panels and go. Overall, things went really smoothly. I was really happy with how the day went. Looking back, I probably could have cheated the entire wall sections. I left the top uh, strip off because of the strapping that I had to add for the boom truck to lift from, but I think it would have been fine if I would have added it on the ground. Here we're just getting the last wall section on, locked down, braced, tied to the other ones, and then prepping for the roof. The roof was the biggest panel and the one I was most uh, curious how it would work out, and we were able to add some long leg bolts tying everything together and it was rock solid after that. Here we're just maneuvering it into place. We were able to get it right where we wanted it. And uh, then just gently set it down on the walls and go about tying it to the top plates. Overall, I was super satisfied to just see so much progress happen in a short amount of time and grateful for my family for helping me out for the day. It's cool to be able to work together and have it all go well. From here is just a matter of finishing the sheathing. I use Zips flashing tape and liquid flashing products to tape all of the seams and um, windows and flash all of the nail penetrations had the wall sheathing go all the way up and meet the roof sheathing and tape that seam as well as the wall to trailer connection to create what I think will be a super tight and weatherproof barrier behind the siding that will last a long time. And then added the rain screen for the cedar and installed the cedar siding and the fascia and roof panels and all the metal trim pieces to complete the exterior. Overall, I'm super happy with how the exterior came out. I think it really clean looking um, house. In here, I didn't film too much. I was on a tight deadline, so I only have a few clips, but the, I opted to do spray foam insulation. Despite the expense, I think it's the best option for the cold climate they'll be in. And then just went about closing up the rest of the interior walls and adding some shelves in the bedroom here and a fireplace around the cabinet bases, wheel well boxes, off platform and all of the room dividers for the bathroom. Added ship, vertical shiplap in the bathroom. I actually already installed all of the flooring. So then once the painting was done, I was able to just start taking off all the masking and see a lot of, see the finish line in sight. So that was exciting. I really liked the black windows um, and the white interior paint, I think, looks really well together. From 
here is just a matter of installing all the remaining pieces for the interior, the cabinets, countertop, sinks, backsplash, shelving, appliances. I had this old ladder in my basement that I thought fit the aesthetic pretty well, so I cut that to size and installed that. A few wood accents throughout, some shelves and closet rod. In the bathroom, we have the incinerator toilet vented outside and this awesome sign that my niece had made and the vanity with a nicely placed window there, bathtub, interior water heater for protection from the cold, and then hookups for washer dryer unit there. And we have the entertainment space, room for a couch there, looking at the fireplace and TV unit. This awesome barn door that goes into the bedroom was created by my nephew in the bedroom with a nice headboard and light and a few windows there. Overall, I'm really happy with how the interior came out as well. I think the bike elements are a pretty unique feature that I'm really happy with. Um, I have a few takeaways from this experience. It's cool pre-selling this one and knowing where it's going to be able to give the buyers exactly what they wanted instead of trying to guess up front. And it was Nice to be able to use a few new products and techniques in this build with the extra insulation and using the boom truck to be able to stay on track and have that all go smoothly was awesome. And yeah, to be able to set a deadline and hit it for the most part, despite all of the delays and costs, craziness going on in construction right now was a good feeling. And being able to work with my niece and nephews are super talented and to see their creativity and talents come out was awesome i'll link to a few videos that they created on parts that they helped out with i think the main thing was just you know to think of ways to use scrap bike parts and create functional light fixtures and door handles and art pieces and whatnot was a fun challenge so yeah, thanks to Whitefish Bike Retreat for trusting me with this opportunity to build them a house. And thanks to anyone that's watched this video and stay tuned for any future projects.